Hello, my name is Chris. I am the lead genius here at Celsia BMW. I would like to first congratulate you on your M340 and welcome you to the BMW family. What I would like to do with you today is take some time to provide an overview, a nice tutorial of the interior of your M340, make sense of everything that we have going on in here so you know how to use all of the great options and equipment inside your car. Because you're watching this video, it is part of our YouTube channel. So when you're finished, you can always click right back at the top of South Shore BMW, go right to playlist, scroll down to M340 tutorial, uh, 2020 through 2022, and then all of the other relevant videos to your car um, is gonna be right inside that playlist for you. If you did purchase or lease this vehicle through Celsia BMW, you've likely clicked uh, onto this video through your initial uh, tutorial PDF that was emailed to you. So this is the second video out of three that we emailed you, part of that PDF. Uh, step one was the five minute essentials. Uh, step two is this video here. Uh, step three is the iDrive 7 video series, which I will get to in a couple of minutes here. Uh, so you are right in uh, the middle here. So if you have not done so already, please go back to the first video, watch the five minute essentials. Please make sure you get yourself successfully signed into your car uh, with your BMW ID. That way any of the memory settings uh, that you do in the vehicle is successfully saved to the BMW cloud under your account. Assuming you've already done that, we're gonna continue on with uh, kind of a general tutorial inside the car today. So the first thing that we're gonna do is just uh, just to kind of highlight, just uh, touching off from the last video, uh, once you are signed into your BMW cloud and all that is uh, ready to go, one touch automatic, um, you know, you have window controls right there. That's going to be uh, nice and easy to use. Right above there is going to be your side mirrors. Side mirrors is part of that memory setting. We're going to move this left to right, determining which side we want to work with. Round dial on top does adjust the glass of the side mirrors there. A steering wheel is going to be a manual adjustment. It's going to be right at the bottom there. So no need to worry about trying to get that saved to the memory because it is a, a manual function. However, the controls for your seats are gonna be right on the left side of the seat. So once you have your seats and your side mirrors the way you'd like it, we're just gonna go right up by the door handle, press set and number one, and then that information is going to be successfully saved uh, under your account, assuming that you're already signed in. And that's a, that's a good first step there. Other things that we have going off of that near the door handle is your lock and unlock function there. Going down a little bit further, uh, you know, the cup holder, that first level there, that's going to release the trunk. Going down even further, down by the floor, pulling that twice is going to unlatch and release uh, the hood. So if you need to get under there to the engine compartment, that area, that is how you would do that. Right under the left vent here is going to be all of your lighting controls. Uh, for the uh, new 3 Series, they made this nice and simple. We're gonna just take a look at that silver tab right in the center and notice that green light, that's your auto function. It's gonna pretty much do all of these other things surrounding it. I know the steering wheel is kind of covering half of this, but that's okay because we just wanna focus on that silver tab, making sure that that's green, that's all you need to know, um, and that's gonna be a nice and simple going forward for you. We're gonna bring this up a little bit so we can see the steering wheel. I know there's quite a few things going on here, kind of layered how they do this. We're gonna start at the back, work our way forward to make sense of all of this and what we have. But before we do that, we're gonna take a look right behind there. This is your live cockpit in the back there. This is kind of your display, kind of showing you everything that you have going on there. Of course, you know, you have the speedometer right there. Uh, if you're in something, um, depending on the mode that you're in, you do have, you know, your RPMs are gonna come around here like that. Um, you know, drive is gonna be there. So right now you're in park. Right there is going to be the driving mode. Current locations at the bottom. All your essential information is gonna run right down there. So of course, you can see uh, 116 in the corner is miles to empty, current time, uh, local speed limit, outside temperature, and uh, simplified map is gonna be right in the center. So I bring that up now because the first thing we're gonna do over here, we're gonna start at this uh, stock here, is you have a button on the end, it says BC. 
So take a look at the right side of the live cockpit. Now as I press that BC button in right on the side there, notice it toggles different types of content um, on that cockpit. And that is your preference. Whatever you like to see as you drive, whatever you leave up there, uh, it will stay in that section. So you can customize that by pressing that button. That becomes a simplified map that's either on or off. Or you can have kind of turn by turn uh, situation goes, goes up there. But um, I kind of prefer this because it's kind of like less is more. It's, it's a nice map, but it's not giving you too much information. So I think it, it fills that space nicely. And then over here, of course, you're going to have your speed. This side uh, pretty much stays fixed. We're not going to be uh, controlling too much of that. So that is going to be on the left side. On the right side over here is going to be your windshield wipers. Uh, notice uh, nothing is on because the system is off. We push this up one position. That's going to turn green letting us know that the, the glass, the windshield is now rain sensing. So depending on how fast we're driving, how hard it's raining, that sensitivity will automatically increase and decrease as it needs to. You can always move this dial up. You can see fast at the top, slow at the bottom. Um, that is adjusting the auto, uh, the sensitivity of the auto function there. So you can certainly adjust that as you need to. Manual controls, you can see how that goes. So we're in this auto position, but if I put it up one position, that's technically low put it up the next position that's going to be high that is a manual operation so you do have to engage uh, with that as well of course off is where we are now pushing down is just going to go once uh, pulling this whole thing towards you is going to spray and uh, clean the front so we'll just keep this on auto it's kind of a good place to keep it moving up even further we do have our paddle shifters uh, plus and minus there if you want to have a little bit more of a spirited drive, if you want to shift to the gears uh, yourself, kind of have fun uh, doing that, you certainly can uh, grab the paddles and do that. Uh, so that uh, comes from F1 Racing, uh, faster uh, you know, shift because you have the paddles right up there. So uh, you don't have to use that, but you know some people enjoy that. So that is always available for you if you'd like to use that. Moving um, to the face of the steering wheel, on the left side is going to be cruise control. On the right side is going to be our entertainment. Right in the center there at the bottom is going to be a heated uh, steering wheel. So that was nice because the previous generation was right on the side, kind of hard to see. A lot of customers actually brought their cars back at lease end or when they traded them in, um, completely unaware that they had a heated steering wheel because it was kind of hidden over there. And I get it, kind of hard to see if you don't, if it wasn't pointed out to you, if you didn't kind of actively look, you might not know it's there, but there's no missing it now. So it's right in the center. So with the cruise control, this is our, our basic setup. This car does not have any level of autonomous driving in it. It is available, uh, but so what happens with that is you have other buttons are filled in here. I have these light bars that will go here. Uh, the M340 gets pushed down and then in this black section here, protruding out is a camera. So that is called Driving Assistance Professional. Uh, that's the package that we offer for that. Again, uh, check on our YouTube channel. Um, you can go under uh, playlist M340 tutorial 2020 through uh, 2022. Uh, check that out. The video is it's called Driving Assistance Professional. Uh, watch that video if you do have that equipment. It's really cool. There's a function of that called Assist Plus that provides uh, you with unlimited hands-free driving under 40 miles per hour. So if you're in a traffic jam, something like that, and you're actively using the Driving Assistance Professional um, technology, and it's kind of like the whole kind of stop and go and you're touching the steering wheel once every 30, 40 seconds um, and you get into a really congested area, a message will pop up and it's called Assist Plus and it will ask you whether or not you want to use that function. Uh, you always have to be asked. It's not something you can just jump into yourself uh, because the vehicle understands the conditions of unfolding around you and then it says, yes, we're comfortable with offering the driver uh, this option at this time. But again, that video is on the YouTube channel as well. Um, I show you real time uh, when I get stuck in traffic how that works. It's really cool. Uh, so if you have this, uh, this technology, and there's a couple other elements here I'll mention throughout this tutorial uh, that we have uh, really detailed videos about. So uh, this is not all. This is not all you need to watch. There's a lot more depending on the level of equipment you have in your car, but just know that's a good resource. For this car, this is our standard setup. Uh, we call this dynamic cruise control. That's what BMW calls it. It's just kind of your simple setup. Uh, this turns the system on. Once you reach a speed you want to go, set is in the corner. If you brake, of course, uh, you can resume, resume or cancel. 
little toggle switch in the middle. You can see the plus and minus there. Uh, one press up increases one mile per hour. Pressing and holding will increase in increments of five. So that's pretty cool. LIM is relatively new for us over in the United States. We haven't really had this, but now all of our models are beginning to get it as they get redesigned or they go through an LCI. Uh, so what that means is um, basically a speed limit control. So if you're on local roads, back roads, and you don't want to exceed a certain speed, you can, kind of, you can press this, use the toggle switch to set the speed, and then it basically provides resistance. So you try to exceed that speed that is set and it pulls you back. It doesn't let you exceed that speed. Uh, you can, of course, kind of keep your foot on the accelerator. I think it's like 30 seconds or so. It does let you break through. But if you know you kind of have a heavy foot and you try to you know, keep yourself in check, that is one way of, uh, of achieving that goal there. Moving over to the entertainment side of things, uh, you can pretty much control the entire iDrive system, the entire car really, from this side here. I like this, I consider this more of a safety feature because it keeps your eyes focused right on the road, especially if you have a head-up display, uh, that those graphics just fall right on the road. So I feel it's really safe. So plus and minus at the top there, increase, uh, increasing or decreasing your audio. So that's uh, pretty, pretty straightforward there. And then what we're gonna do is just back out there. I don't know why that kind of zoomed in too much. So that's what this does here. Arrow left and right is going to the next track, the next playlist. Uh, so that's a, a nice way of um, easily controlling that. Microphone at the bottom is activating what we call your intelligent personal assistant. So I will actually move this over just a little bit so you can see and bring this up. So one quick press here. Notice it says, what can I help you with? Uh, notice that's moving around. It's listening to me right now. So I'm gonna press it again because it's gonna get uh, pretty confused and not understand what's happening. But one quick press there is going to activate your intelligent personal assistant in the car. That is really, really intuitive these days. So think of it like, you know, it's based in climate, driving modes, windows, anything you can really think of, you know, hey BMW, roll down the passenger's window, change to sport mode, hey BMW, I'm hot, I'm cold, you know, turn the heated seats on. I mean, whatever the case is, um, some of that functionality, if you're watching this video and you have like a, you know, a 2020 M340 or something like that, um, it is software based. So you need at least the um, July 2020 software update of iDrive 7 in order to have some of that functionality. But if you're watching this because you just picked up your 21 or 22, M340, I mean, you're good to go because that already came from the factory that way. So speak to the system as you speak to a person sitting next to you, less is more, it is very intuitive. Uh, no certain commands, no awkward pauses, no kind of waiting back and forth. You just tell it what you want to do, you know. Hey, I'm hungry, let's go to Whole Foods or I want to go grocery shopping, find me Italian restaurants. Um, again, you know, change to sport mode, roll down the passenger's window. Uh, turn the fan up. It's it's really really cool uh, what it can do. So that's that's how that works. Center uh, tab right there that replaced what we used to call mode. Mode if you have a head up display, which we do in this car, so you're not going to be able to see it in the video. But um, if I press this, what I see through the windshield right now is it says media radio, and I can use this toggle switch and scroll between Sirius XM, FM, AM, um, and just kind of go through those options there. So that's pretty pretty nice because I don't have to look over here. I don't have to worry about this. I don't have to use the iDrive controller. I can just keep my hands on the steering wheel, eyes straight ahead. And if I select Sirius XM, for example, I can then scroll through all of my Sirius XM channels. If I, if I want to go through FM or AM, I can scroll through all my stations. So uh, whatever works for you is good, but that's a nice, uh, easy way of adjusting your media. Phone in the corner is how you receive phone calls, also how you disconnect them. Um, so it's just simply one touch there uh, will do that for you. So that's pretty pretty simple. That's how that works there. And that's the steering wheel uh, completely. Let's move over here to the center of the M340. Now the first thing is, as I mentioned before, we do have that iDrive 7 video series. So if you did purchase or lease the car from us, uh, that's step three in the uh, tutorial, the PDF that we sent to you. Uh, click that and what it does is all of these different elements and your intelligent person, your, I'm sorry, your active um, driving assistant and all of that, all of your intelligent safety features are bundled into one video. Then you have uh, media, communication, nav, car, apps, 
all of those represent a separate video that we've tied together to one complete video series. So if you're familiar with a couple of those components, you can skip them. Um, otherwise, you can just go, you know, right in if you have time and, you know, watch the whole series. It's just really whatever it is that you want uh, to do there. So I think that that's a, a pretty cool thing that, you know, we're able to um, we're able to offer that to customers because it's a good resource because a lot of customers, you know, there's a lot of information in the car and it's hard to remember everything when you pick up the car on day one. So it's great to get a nice quick overview when you first get in the car to so see you're comfortable when you leave, but it's good to have like a deeper dive the resource that you can use um, in the, you know, coming days, weeks and months um, as you're getting more familiar uh, with the car. So that's, I think is a really good, um, a really good resource there so please check that out um, you all have access to that so that's uh, pretty cool there so we're not going to focus too much on this up here because we're going to focus on the uh, actual physical elements down there but uh, take a look so again that is your intelligent safety everything from your frontal collision pedestrian detection lane departure warning blind spot all that stuff is enabled you can touch the screen a ring you can go under uh, configure individual if you need to uh, make any adjustments there otherwise we say green is good we would just want to make sure that's green if you do need to adjust something you certainly can but otherwise that's where you go uh, for that stuff everything right down here is all of your climate everything below there is your entertainment so if we break down the climate for example Auto is right here. Auto is letting us know that the vehicle is going to automatically determine a few things. It's going to be looking at um, the airflow, where that's coming from, and the intensity of the fan speed. When auto is enabled, we are just controlling the temperature. So temperature up, temperature down. That's why it's a red arrow up and a blue arrow down. We're gonna control that as uh, you know we need to. If there is a need to have that manual control and we need to do that, that's gonna be this one there. So next one over, person pops up, arrows being pointed at them. We're gonna to continue to process until the arrows are going to where we want them to go. Then of course we can do the temperature, fan speed. And in this moment, we are in complete control of the climate system because we are, we are engaged you know, with doing everything. Pressing auto, notice it keeps the temperature where I last left it, but it's now going to regulate all those other things uh, for me. So I don't, one less thing I have to worry about. Customers are always coming in complaining that, you know, the windshield's getting foggy, you know, things are, doesn't seem right in the car. Chances are auto is not on, or you have, you know, we go into air recirculation and all that stuff. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, I would say nine times out of 10, if a customer is complaining about any sort of issue with, you know, the window fogging up and, you know, things just don't seem right, Auto's not on. Auto's not gonna let that happen. It's a pretty intelligent system, uh, how that works. There's sensors all over this car uh, to kind of level that out and determine uh, where things need to be. So that's what this is here. This is identical over here because you have dual climate in the front. So that's why, you know, what happens here happens there. Uh, when I press it, notice temperatures are consistent because sync is enabled. You can get to sync by pressing the menu AC button there synchronize is right at the top you can see it's checked off uh, if you do have remote engine start it will say preconditioning ventilation if you don't have remote engine start it'll just say ventilation uh, so going right into there remote engine start making sure that's checked off that's essential to make sure that that function is working um, in order to use that you just take your key fob out press the lock button three times in a row uh, really fast very rapidly Engine turns on for about 15 minutes, conditions the interior, climatizes everything, you'll be good to go. Uh, you can at any time in the 15 minutes there, press it rapidly again three times to shut it off. Um, so, but after the 15 minutes, it will shut off. You can go again for an additional 15 minutes uh, if you need to uh, with that. So that's how that's gonna work. This is where uh, we press this. You can see air quality, uh, air recirculation, automatic, fresh air. Um, and it tells you a description of what is actually happening um, in the vehicle when you do that. So that is how we are going to be controlling that there. Again, that's the menu AC getting you into that sub menu of the climate control system. Max AC is dropping the temperature to 60, fan speed at the highest. Hot summer day, that is by far the easiest way of cooling down the interior in the shortest amount of time. So that's pretty nice. 
um, and I know you can't see it on my side, but um, on either side at the very end is the heated steering, uh, I'm sorry, the heated uh, seat. So one touch there activates the highest level and it will deactivate one time each time I press it. It's gonna pull that back, which is nice. On my side over here, of course, we have auto where we started. This is your rear defrost, that's your front defrost. And right here is my heated uh, seat button there. Moving down, you have your climate, I'm sorry, you have your uh, entertainment. So one through eight is your memory. So notice as I run my finger across at the top of the screen, it says not assigned because there's nothing there. Anything at all in the iDrive system that is highlighted, for example, media is highlighted now, or for example, let's say I wanted the sync function enabled because passenger comes in, they come over here, change the temperature, they get out of the car. Now I want it to be consistent, but it's not. So how do I synchronize this again? So what you do is you go to menu, check off synchronize to get that the way you want it, highlight synchronize, press and hold any number, synchronize saves right there. So now when the passenger comes in and changes stuff on their side and now they leave again, all I need to do is press eight and it's gonna to go to 71 and synchronizes uh, the climate again. If you want to erase that or anything here, you press and hold one and eight at the same time until you get that message. It's going to uh, reset the program there. And now uh, there's nothing there on number eight. That works for pretty much anything you can have highlighted in the iDrive system. It is very, very cool. A lot of people are under the impression it's just for radio stations or phone numbers. It definitely isn't. As you just saw, you can put whatever you want in there. It's really cool. Um, not really so in Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, not like third-party software, things like that, but definitely things inside the iDrive system specifically. If anything you try to save just says unable to save, you need to back out a menu. Some things are a little finicky, so it, it does, there's a kind of an order to how they want it. So if, if you ever have an issue where a certain menu will not go, just back up one more menu and likely at least you'll get a little bit closer if you can't get exactly what you want but uh, most of the features in there will work pretty well. Arrow left and right here is the same as the one on the steering wheel. Uh, simply going to the next track, the next playlist. Uh, dial here is going to the next, it's just the volume. So you can increase, decrease that, press it in, uh, silences everything. Same with the plus and minus here. I have a mode and I have a band button right there. Right under here, cup holders, USB, Right here, depending on the model year, um, you know, by default, this is an NFC pad for your BMW digital key. And some models, uh, this particular one we're sitting in, it doubles as an NFC pad and wireless charging. However, huge disclaimer there, um, due to the uh, chip shortage that, you know, we're all experiencing, uh, we are no longer putting the digital key in the three series. In, in many other cars actually, and we're no longer putting wireless charging in. So this likely will be kind of just kind of open. It probably won't be much of anything, but um, this particular car has both, uh, which is good, but uh, that's it's uh, very common now. So there's a lot of temporary uh, shortages of options and things. I'm sure if you've been into a BMW center or pretty much any, uh, any dealership today, um, there's quite a few uh, components that are missing these days, unfortunately, because everything is a, is a computer these days and having a chip shortage is not very good when you have a car that's basically a laptop on wheels. So uh, just keep that in mind that that uh, equipment may not be there necessarily. And if it is, I mean, it might not be everything. It might just be a NFC pad, not wireless charging or... So just keep in mind that um, it's always important to take a look at the window sticker on the car because that will show uh, exactly what's happening with the car and if there's any option credits or anything like that that'll also be displayed there because i know we are giving um, at least in the united states we are giving a credit on certain models that don't have certain types of equipment so uh, that's that's everything in there uh, coming down a little bit further 
So we of course have our iDrive controller. This has pretty much been a hallmark of the iDrive system since the very beginning. But as I've showed you in the earlier parts of this video, uh, you can use the intelligent personal assistant. Of course, this is a touch screen. So there are many other ways of doing the same thing in here. So if you don't want to use this, you don't have to. But if this is all you know, because if you've had many BMWs and you didn't have a touch screen before, or the voice assistant wasn't very good before, that's fine, you can still use this. Um, I personally feel that iDrive 7 is pretty much more, it's more optimized for touch, uh, gesture and voice. But if if you don't want to have to do that, or I mean, I, I do encourage everybody to kind of, you know, go outside their comfort zone and try something new because of course these cars are always evolving. So I'm not saying we're getting rid of this wheel down here, but it, it would be probably likely that there's going to be some sort of modification in the future where they're going to really want you to interact with the displays a certain way. So I would be uh, kind of more open-minded to learning some some new things because, you know, they are pretty useful. But if you want to use that, you certainly can. I just feel like touching the screen or talking to it is going to be probably easier for you in this car. Uh, coming down the side here, uh, this is your traction off. Don't pretty much don't need to worry about that. Uh, if you have uh, an X drive model, I mean, that's that's fantastic. You don't really have to worry too much about that. Uh, so coming down further, uh, if this car had the parking assistant package, it would be a camera right there. Uh, pressing that camera activates the front facing camera. There's uh, pretty cool stuff you can do with that. Again, we do have a parking assistant video on YouTube, again, tied into all these videos. So check that out. That's cool. The P with the traffic cone is your park distance control sensors. Uh, it's called PDC. They are automatically active uh, when you get close to something. So tight parking spot, garage, drive through, really anything that comes too close to the car, you will notice uh, it will pop up on the display. Um, it will look something like this, but this is color coded uh, bands of green, yellow, and red. You can actually see um, that right there popping up. So if that gets annoying because you're doing the same thing every day, you kind of know what's happening, you can always press that little button down there and it silences those alarms for just that time uh, being. But uh, if you have a parking assistant package, there'll be more options off to the side of um, how that's gonna help you as well here. There'll be more there. You can always activate the rear view camera without being in reverse. So some pretty cool stuff that you can do with that. Coming down further, it says A off, so that's your auto start stop, uh, basically override. Um, and this is also depending on uh, the level of equipment that you have in your vehicle as well. So when the M340 first came out, it was just kind of your standard um, M performance inline six cylinder engine and a pretty, pretty standard setup option there. The A off, when you press that, that light goes on that lets you know that you're overriding the auto start stop function, which is, you know, coming to a stop and shutting the engine off each time for efficiency and all of that. Um, however, from 2021 forward, M340s have a um, 48 volt mile hybrid system in them. Um, as a result of that, this control no longer exists. This doesn't exist anymore. So what that means is uh, you, I mean, there's, a, there's some benefits there. I mean, you put your foot down, you'll have an additional 40 horsepower for 10 seconds if you're trying to overtake someone or pat, whatever you're trying to do. Um, it'll fill in kind of the low end torque. It's, it's a smoother ride. The, when it does shut off, when you come to a stop, it's a much more uh, smooth operation when it kicks back on. So uh, there's a lot of benefits to have that 48 volt mile hybrid system in there. This particular vehicle uh, just doesn't have that. But so just keep that in mind, this equipment uh, is no longer available in our 21 and 22 uh, model years. So um, just be mindful of that. Coming down, this is your engine start stop. And then this is your driver experience control. Always defaults to comfort mode. Comforts is a balance between sport and eco pro. If you jump up to sport, you have more horsepower, more torque, stiffens up the steering. It's uh, definitely a much more aggressive uh, feel. You can definitely hear that um, M Sport exhaust back there. It's definitely a, you know, a really great mode to be in and definitely preferred in this car. Eco Pro, really good for longer distances. Let's say you're highway driving, you're at speed. You don't really need more speed. You're just kind of cruising along. That's really great to kind of save you fuel. Um, it's 
it's a great car. It's right at the crossroads of um, something that is a you know a really great performance machine, but something that is also a really good daily driver, something that is practical, that you can take on trips and do things like that. And having these different modes here uh, really make that possible, that you can really kind of dip into uh, different areas of efficiency or performance. So just keep that in mind. Right at the bottom is Auto H, that stands for Auto Hold. When that is green, that means that function's enabled. It will say Auto H up in your live cockpit. Anytime you then come to a stop and you firmly put your foot on the brake, the brakes are automatically held for you. You don't have to keep your foot on the brake uh, pedal the whole time. You know that you're good to go, you can release it, and then essentially you'll just stop and your foot's now hovering over the accelerator. It is an interesting experience because it's opposite of how we all were, uh, how we were taught how to drive, of course. Um, because when you're idling or you're stopped or something like that, you know your foot's usually on the brake, not hovering over the accelerator. Uh, but the car does a great job at doing that, and it's, um, you know, if you find yourself in traffic coming out of a city or something like that, it really is a nice feature just to kind of. Um, you know it's it just kind of helps a little bit you don't have to keep your foot down there and i know it sounds minor but customers that try it and they come back they're like where has this been my whole life this is such a little thing but it's a it's a nice thing to kind of relieve the muscles and the fatigue that can happen in your legs and stuff so that's nice parking brake is next to it pull up to activate push down to deactivate when this function's enabled you just have to push it once it's, it's intuitive, so it does everything for you from there, meaning you put the car in park, it automatically activates the, the brake. You get, the, you get in the car, turn the car on, put it in drive, it automatically disengages the parking brake. Automatically does it, auto H always stays on at that point. You don't have to keep pressing this on and off, on and off when you wanna use it. It's something where you decide that you wanna use it and it's always on in the background and intelligently the system determines uh, when this should activate or deactivate. So pretty cool. And um, I think that's pretty much everything. As I look around the interior here of the M340, I hope everything that I covered in here uh, makes sense, kind of brings everything together for you. Again, please, uh, again, look at the resources that's put up on our YouTube channel. Go right up, click South Shore BMW, right at the top there, click on playlist, scroll down to uh, M340, 340 uh, tutorial for 2020 through 2022. Anything relevant to this car should already be there. Um, if the if you want to, you can even go into the three series tutorial for you know the same model year. It might not be specific to the M340, but of course you know it's a G20, so it is you know the same car essentially. So uh, it it would be relevant. So take a look at that and see what's going on in there. Subscribe to the channel if you will. So you can always stay up to date with the latest content. These cars have remote software upgrades. You'll have new functions, new features available overnight as BMW pushes them out. And we make, or I make uh, videos uh, letting you know what that is, what's happening, what's going on with them, how to use it. So the learning is never over with these cars. Uh, like I mentioned, it is a laptop on wheels. And just like a laptop, as that gets updated and can do new things, your car can as well. And it's really important to keep on top of that because sometimes a new feature comes in and you know pops in and customers are going, what is going on? Where did this come from? I didn't know I had this. And chances are you didn't have it and it's new today. So um, really, I think that's really great that that's kind of the experience that our customers have is that you know they they purchase the product but the product is always evolving which is really really nice so uh, subscribe to the channel so you always uh, stay up to date and you know what's going on with your vehicle and uh, thanks again for watching the vehicle and of uh, the video and of course please stay healthy and safe out there